Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video I'm gonna try to compare the efficiency gains between the Power Mac G4 and the Power Mac G5. More specifically, I'm, I hope to compare the performance of the processors in terms of power consumption and what you gain from you know, the whole architecture, system bus, cache and etc. It's going to be a very difficult question to answer because my Power Mac, Mac G5 has 6 hard drives, SSDs, but nonetheless and a very power thirsty quadro whereas the G4 here has a Radio 9000 less RAM only two hard drives and so on so how do we make the comparison as fair as possible and focus only on the processor first of all the G5 quad runs at 2.5 GHz and the G4 runs at 1.25 so by forcing the processor to run on reduced power mode or reduced performance mode you force it to stay at 1.25 GHz the G4 has only two processors and the G5 has four cores so what we can do here is disable two cores to be sure that the comparison is fair also, I'm going to be sure that the cores are belong to the same physical processor because the G4 has only one data bus for both processors and the G5 has independent data bus buses for both processors. What we have now is basically a dual Power Mac G5 but with the two cores sharing the same uh, data bus, as you can see here the CPU 3M4 or the cores 3M4 are idle competing against a dual 1.25 Power Mac G4 and why am I doing this? first of all we know that the G4's at the late stage were limited and by limited I mean that Apple didn't use all the potential the processors have for example, they were famous for being cache starved. At the time when IBM was shipping the PowerPC workstation with 16, 32 megabytes of cache, Apple was shipping them with one or two. And given the slow system buses of the era, it was very important to keep the PowerPCs really fed with data. The Duo 125 I have is one of the most generous in terms of cache and it has two megs of L3 cache. The G5 does not have L3 cache, but the system bus was so fast that it probably, or as far as I, as I remember, the system bus has the same speed of the L3 cache of the Power Mac G4. And speaking of system bus, even though the Power Mac G4s used at the end DDR memory, and the late PowerBook G4s even used DDR2 memory, the system bus remained at 167 megahertz meaning that the bus didn't make or the system didn't make any use of the capacity of the DDR memories it was just really to make the system cheaper to ship uh, because as far as I know DDR memory at the time was already cheaper than standard PC133 or PC166 SD RAM with the G5 Apple solved the bus, the system bus problems. This design had really a lot of bandwidth. The high-end G5s all had the system bus running out at half of the speed of the processor. So here you have a 2.5 gigahertz G5 running uh, on top of a 125 gigahertz system bus. And the cheapest G5s and the iMac G5s had the system bus at one third of the CPU clock speed. It was still much better than what Intel offered at the time and much better than the Power Mac G4s. And you could see on my previous video that the G5 had better memory performance than the first generation of Xeon Mac Pros. At the moment, in idle, the Power Mac G4 is using 126 watts 
and the Parm Active 5 is using 192 watts. I would say they are using almost the same if you consider the fact that the G5 has a power hungry quadro and the G4 has a nimble Radeon 9000. I would say the G5 uses a bit more electricity, but not much. Let's begin our test with Geekbench. It's a pure CPU test. I'm not sure it uses, even uses much of system bus here, and that's gonna give us a comparison of the performance of the G5 running at the same clock speed as a late G4. I'm gonna try to click at the same time. Let's see. Three, two, one, go. I can hear the G4 fan spinning up, but since the G5 is suppressed to stay at low performance mode, the noise level is the same. I'm actually going to restart this test because I forgot to close uh, 10 for Fox, and there's a web page open there, probably using CPU, and I also have activity monitor running. I forgot to close it. I just wanted to have it there to ensure that I'm using only um, two cores. So, well, we have to start over. All right, second round. The G5 is now using 223 watts and the G4 is using 132. Again, reminding everybody that the G5 has a quadro, the G5 has two physical processors, well, the G4 as well, well, never mind. The G5 has a liquid cooling system and the G5 has six SSDs, whereas the G4 has only how many? Two in RAID 0. Still, as far as we know, the G4 has better performance per watt numbers than the G5, or that's what we always been, have been told, and that's why we never had a PowerBook G5. So I'm still expecting here that the G4 is gonna give much better numbers in terms of performance per watt, even if you normalize for all the peripherals and the extra graphics cards. I really don't think that the Quadro running almost idle in the SSDs account for 91 watts. And we are done. I'm going to talk about the numbers in details later, but the difference is not really big. The G4 scored 1106, and the G5 scored 1238. We can see my approach worked. The G4 shows two processors, two cores, two threads. So does the G5. Two processors, two cores, and two threads. The G4 beats the G5 in integer, in integer performance with 1477, whereas the G4 scores 1264. The floating point performance is almost similar. The G5 scores 1346 and the G4 scores 1267. We can infer that in terms of raw processor performance, an overclocked G4 would probably beat a G5. In memory performance, we expect the G5 to beat badly the G4, and that's what happens with the G4 scoring 531, with the best performance being the sequential writing at 726 megabytes per second on SDDlib, and the underclocked G5 scoring 1.82 gigabytes with a full score of 1025. The G5 is much superior on stream score and that can be probably be explained by the system architecture. Uh, scoring 1200 with the best performance being single threaded vector streaming 
with 2.4 gigabytes per second and the GeForce scoring only 726 megabytes per second so it's like a third of the value maybe between a third and a quarter of the value from Xbench I'm excluding any test that can be related to the graphics card so I'm assuming here Quartz, of course, OpenGL and user interface test is also heavily accelerated by the graphics card so I'm excluding that as well and let's go we are done the score of the underclocked G5 is very similar to the G4 with the G5 scoring 8470 and G4 scoring 76 with the key highlights that's redundant the G4 has double the performance on GCD with 632 millions of operations per second compared to 3 million operations on the G5 I'm going to put the scores later um, Altivec is also much better on the G4 250 points against 163 with almost 10 million gigaflops per second on the G4 compared to 6.52 gigaflops on the G5 as expected the G5 is a floating point monster with 10.59 million operations per second against 6.97 million operations per second on the G4 the G5 wins the thread test with 2 million operations per second on 4 threads and 2.36 million locks per second also on 4 threads with the G5 scoring 1.32 and 2.02 on memory the G5 loses the system allocate test by a good amount 733 kilo allocations per second on the G4 against 438 on the G5 but the rest the G5 wins also the stream performance is more than double with the G5 scoring yeah more than double on every single parameter the storage test is an interesting one because it shows that well the G4 has almost the same performance as the G5 being the G4 RAID 0 with one drive on each ATA bus and the G5 having a SATA 2 drive connected to a SATA 1 bus also an SSD so averaging 100 megs on both devices and there is really not much difference in performance here except uncached performance for somehow on the G5 is better but again we are talking about a much superior system architecture Now let's do a quick evaluation here. The G5 was using 223 watts during the benchmarks and it scored 12.38 on Geekbench. So we have 0 0.18 Geekbench points per watt. And let's assume that the Quadro and the SSDs are using 50 watts more or less so we go 223 minus 50 173 so we take 173 and divide by 1238 and would say 0 0.13 gig bench points per watt assuming you know uh, more austere graphics card all right so that was the overall score now let's consider only the processor tests so let's see integer and floating point and not count the memory since you know we know that the g4 could have had a better performance if it had better you know system environment so let's see here in integer we have Oh, there's no single score for 
integer so I'm just gonna I guess average these values for single threaded and multi threaded and then come up with a value so I added here all single and multi threaded integer values divided by the number of tests so I came with an average score of 843 for single multi single threaded integer tests and 1686 for multi-threaded so if we divide by our power consumption of 223 then we have 843 divided by 223 actually the other way around yeah we are looking for uh, points per watt so we have 223 watts divided by 843 giving us 0 0.26 and on multi-threaded that gives us 223 divided by 1686 0 0.13 mid course correction here what I'm doing is watts per geek bench point yes yeah, so <laughs> I'm dividing the points seeing how many points fit in each watt so I'm not gonna re-record everything, so be aware before you know any criticism. I hope you watched this far.